I can't well, move. Oh, 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 holy. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. <laughs> Give me the f out of here. Run. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, Why no. Are you going so far? I can't go any faster. Hey. You ever wonder why we're here? I don't remember all the response at the moment. It's so okay. It's not turned on today. It's okay. I mean, here in this box canyon, there's all that stuff about God. This is something that I don't take pride in. I remember years ago, whenever I unsubscribed from Rooster Teeth and when I stopped paying attention to them altogether, I know there were a lot of people who were upset with me, saying that, you know, I was abandoning them in their hour of need, and I was, I, all this, I was like, I just... Their hour of need had passed, the damage was done. Sad to say, <clears throat> but yes. So, Rooster Teeth is no more. At least, it will be. From what I understand, the process of like deconstructing and completely dismantling the company will take a couple of months and then they're going to send everyone off on their own. And here's my thing. Rooster Teeth has been in has been in operation for coming up on their 21st year. This actually would have been their 21st year as of April Fool's Day. So I'm just floored by the fact that things just went downhill so fast for them. You know when I think the biggest thing where the cracks in the foundation really started? Monty him passed away. Exactly. That was for me, and I think a lot of people out there, when Monty Ohm passed away, it set the roots... Disrespectful handling of his legacy. Well, that came later, but the initial shock of his death floored a lot of people and just made people, like, just... They couldn't believe it. And then, you know, of course, the mishandling of his IP, which I've read I've read Shane Newville and Sheena Duquette's letters to and about Rooster Teeth and the treatment that they both received after Monty's passing. Shane, who was Monty's right-hand man, just getting outright. And then not only that, but Sheena, Monty's widow, getting treated like garbage by them. I just... It, it just... It hurts, man. It hurts so bad. And then, of course... The whole Grey Haddock fiasco where because of Crunch and because of him overworking the employees, he was let go. Then, of course, the multiple things of sexual misconduct with Adam Kovic, Ryan Haywood, the firing of Joel Heyman, and basically just the outright, just change in overall attitude. The attitude at Rooster Teeth used to be, we don't give a shit about sides, we're going to poke fun at everybody. Then it became, oh, we're only going to pay attention to this one side, and if you disagree with us, then don't watch our content. Well, guess what? People stopped watching your content, and now the company has gone bust. And this is a weird thing, too, because Ruby is still going. Also, um, Death Battle as well. Where Death Battle's under Rooster Teeth's umbrella, I wonder how they're going to continue because uh, they could go independent, but I don't know if the people who run it have the like have the ability to buy it out from under uh, Warner. Uh, slow-mo guys, I know Gavin, I think, probably has safety things on his slow-mo guys, basically saying if... Rooster Teeth goes belly up, he owns, he, like, all rights go back to him. The slow-mo guys actually got more popular than Rooster Teeth itself, and that's, that's amazing. We have here Moist Critical, a.k.a. Charlie, a.k.a. Penguin Zero, talking about Rooster Teeth and saying goodbye to Rooster Teeth, and us as former fans of said Rooster Teeth. I guess this is our, our farewell to, to the former internet juggernaut in my opinion they were dead a long time ago but this is the very delayed funeral in my opinion yeah well here we go today i've got the black shirt on for this funeral service for one of youtube's first major content teams rooster teeth after 21 years, Warner Bros. Discovery has announced that it's shutting down Rooster Teeth. Now, they're not getting outright euthanized and going to the Shadow Realm or anything because there are certain Rooster Teeth projects that will persist past this, but by and large, Rooster Teeth, as you've known them, will cease to operate in the capacity that it has been. With its closure, about 150 full-time employees will be laid off with additional contractors and content creators taking a huge hit as well. Mm. Wishing the employees the best moving forward, I hope they find work elsewhere. Just a pretty sad set of circumstances all around because I know a lot of people 
myself included, have very fond memories of this brand. Rooster Teeth was yeah. one of the pillars of internet content creation for gaming for a long time. With yep. series like Red vs. Blue, which were these incredible machinimas that really kind of changed the space for a while and had an unbelievable influence online. I still remember being this soiled diaper baby boy toddler, still drinking <laughs> milk and having nightmares about cursive handwriting, going into GameStop and seeing bad. a red vs. blue DVD for sale there. And I couldn't believe it. My fucking mind exploded out of my ears because I knew it from the internet. And at the time, the internet to me was still this mysterious dimension where, you know, Timmy Turner floats around in the cyberspace on an email. But now I was seeing this piece of internet content I was familiar with in the real world, the corporeal dimension, and I thought it was the coolest <laughs> shit ever. And it still is extremely impressive what they were able to do, and for so yeah. long as well. Achievement Hunter, another absolute colossal success in the gaming space online. Rooster Teeth was just the gold standard for gaming-related content for so, so long. Absolutely crushing it. And it is pretty tragic to see how this story played out for Rooster Teeth in the more recent years. Now, Warner Bros. has been on this absolute warpath, just leaving mangled corpses in their wake where they're just fucking frying everything they own. And it looks like Rooster Teeth is going to be joining Coyote vs. Acme in their dumpster out back. But unlike Coyote vs. Acme, this one I think a lot of people expected. I just don't think anyone was well, jump scared yeah. by this news. Yes, Warner Bros. recent business strategy appears to just be friendly fire out the wazoo. It seems like they're operating under the assumption of, if we own nothing, surely we can't continue to lose money. But <laughs> them axing rooster teeth and putting them in the Warner Bros. Cemetery, burying them out back, is not shocking. For the last, like, five or so years, Rooster Teeth has been really treading water. They've been struggling, yeah. and they've got no water wingies to help them. Social Blade only goes as far back as 2021, but you can already see that their views had stagnated and often would decline. Before this, they were an absolute juggernaut in the scene. So starting in 2021, they were averaging... I want to... I want to... I, I know I'm like I don't want to pause too much here. That is a video loss of over of almost 200 million views. They went on a massive delete spree in S September 2023 and deleted over 200 million views of stuff from their channel. Then another 100 million a month later. I know that's October and November. So damn. And they have been losing. I want everyone to notice this too. This is zero. This line here is zero. And on average, Rooster Teeth has been losing over 10,000 subs a month for over three years. Pretty much their best months, they just broke even. <laughs> yeah, and a couple of months, they, and like one month here, they actually went positive. That was in all the way back in May of Oh yeah, that's May, June, July. July of 2021. That was probably like a new Ruby season release or something. Maybe. I don't know. Before this, they were an absolute juggernaut in the scene. So starting in 2021, they were averaging between 8 to 10 million views a month, whereas in their heyday, in their prime, they were pulling in tens of millions of views per month and tens of thousands of subscribers per month. There's a lot of factors that contributed to this decline, the main ones being just an overall loss of interest from a large chunk of their audience that just went to other channels elsewhere. Yeah. There's also a ton of controversies that Rooster Teeth kept finding themselves in that they were never able to fully recover from yeah. and a lot of their biggest talent kept leaving them to just go independent and make their own shows and productions so all of this over time has just led to the current state of rooster teeth it's not flourishing uh, and it's definitely not profitable with 150 full-time employees and contractors and content creators it's losing more money than fucking madam web so it's not Ouch. surprising that Warner Bros. made the decision to ultimately just put it to rest. Like, they didn't have many other choices. I, I guess they could take the 150 full-time employees and just transition them to being door-to-door -door asbestos sales reps. You probably <laughs> find more money in that than what they were currently finding with the Rooster Teeth brand. Which is just sad to yeah, see it get to this point. But like I, I mean, mentioned, it's not the end of everything Rooster Teeth related. They do plan on continuing the Roost Podcast Network for some time here while they evaluate outside interest in acquiring it. There's also a movie that's being worked on between Warner Bros. and Rooster Teeth that they plan on releasing. 
though I'd take that with a huge fucking grain of salt right now because Warner Bros. has become infamous for just destroying movies that are pretty much done for the sake of a tax write-off, like what they've already done with Batgirl and now Coyote vs. Acme. So there's a good chance that this one they just wipe their ass with at the finish line per year. I, yeah, I don't see the, that film ever being released. And if it is, it'll be a miracle. Plus, I hate to say it, Rooster Teeth's track record when it comes to film releases, they don't really have the best. I mean, Laser Team 1 and 2, they were okay, but they weren't anything to write home about. Hell, the only thing that, that a lot of people remember about that is the first one, because it had Alan Richson in it, who is currently killing it as Jack Reacher. And then, of course, you know, and plus also there was Bloodfest, which, ugh, oh, what a waste. What a perfectly good waste. It's so much going into that. And of course here, you know, it's like Ruby, Genlock. Yeah, Genlock is done. It's it's done. Because the second season was so shit. Like everyone was like, yep. Also because they took forever to come out with Genlock season two, because of the fact that they were trying to transfer it to HBO and that didn't work. Usual. And they are also currently exploring options for Rooster Teeth's content catalog and some of their IP like Red vs. Blue, Ruby, and Genlock. So while there is still some Rooster Teeth related content that will survive Judgment Day here, it is still the end of the road for Rooster Teeth itself overall. The general manager of Rooster Teeth, Jordan Levin, made a statement, and I'm going to read this section of it. He said, We've read the headlines about industry-wide layoffs and closures, and you've heard me give my perspective and updates on the rapidly changing state of media and entertainment during each of our monthly all-hands meetings. Since inheriting ownership and control of Rooster Teeth from AT&T following its acquisition of Time Warner, Warner Bros. Discovery continued its investment in our company, content, and community. Now, however, it's with a heavy heart I announce that Rooster Teeth is shutting down due to challenges facing digital media resulting from fundamental shifts in consumer behavior and monetization across platforms, advertising, and patronage. Now, there's a lot more in his statement here, but this is the only titty I'm going to suckle on from it. I think this part yeah. of the statement is the most telling about the challenges that they were facing, and it's challenges that anyone from the outside could also see them facing. As consumer behavior was changing, aka viewers choosing different things over rooster teeth and just having a lot more competition in the space, they were no longer, like, the only place for high-quality gaming videos. As the entire digital landscape started to shift, Rooster Teeth kept falling to the wayside, and people were just choosing competitors over them, so they were hemorrhaging their audience, and overall just found it difficult to adapt in the new environment. And then the monetization and advertising changes they make mention of there, I believe the biggest things that affected Rooster Teeth was YouTube's change in how much money is generated by shorter content. For a while, it didn't really matter how long a video uh, was. No. I, I disagree with that because they can they continued to find success after that. As a matter of fact, their chain their like their channels still continue to grow because most Ruby episodes are well over eight minutes long. Or ten, back then it was ten minutes long. Most Ruby episodes are more than ten minutes long. Most Red versus Blue episodes uh, in the newer, especially in like the later seasons, are well over ten minutes. All of Achievement Hunters videos concern like and Let's Plays like a lot of them are thirty minutes or longer. And they can and but and all the channels continued to grow as is. Once again, I don't think it was from the changing of of like from short content to long form content that killed them it was just the fact that they mishandled everything and it, they had they had the opportunity to keep growing ray and uh, i think jeremy both have talked about this the fact that rooster teeth and achievement hunter never reached out to collaborate with other gamers like vanos when they were on the come up the only ones that they did was C Nanners. They only did like one or two videos with him. One with uh, Marcel. Uh, they did one with Etika and Laserbeam. And they didn't collaborate very much with other big creators. But my whole or my whole deal is the fact that Rooster Teeth kept valuing all the wrong things instead of looking at what worked. Instead, they kept stubbornly pissing in the wind and just saying it'll work eventually. It didn't work. Yeah, I don't think I've told very many people this. I actually got a, I actually got a, a job offer for an internship at Rooster Teeth way back in the day of like I think it was like 2014. Yeah, 2014. I sent in 
uh, some things, some gaming video things that I edited. I received a notice saying, hey, uh, we like your work. Uh, would you be interested in uh, coming to Austin to look, potentially look at having a job here? Here was, the, here was what killed my interest in it. I, like, in the contract that you know they were they were sending out for like NDAs and stuff like that basically it said this is for a position of a unpaid internship well how am i how am i going to live and it's just like well we don't know and basically it's just like that's for you to figure out i was like i appreciate i appreciate the offer but i'm good part of me wonders maybe like like if i would have taken it what would have happened i don't know how would you have you know it's like unpaid internships are basically a scam they are, and according to what a lot of people said, Rooster Teeth was more than apt to take advantage of that. What dictated the amount of money it earned was basically just views. But then the focus shifted to longer form content with the addition of mid-roll ads, which starting at eight minutes, you can start putting in ad breaks. And this led to a lot of the focus on the digital landscape being for the longer form content to reach that eight minute mark. Rooster Teeth's most popular content was usually sub eight minutes. Their heaviest hitters that were consistently their bread and butter content, like the animated adventures, Red vs. Blue, Rage Quit, aside from a couple of Rage Quit videos, which were more than eight minutes, most of their big successful ones were under eight minutes, usually. Mm, red vs. Blue, yeah. Uh, hold on, real quick, just most popular. Yeah, oh yeah, Red vs. Blue Season 8. Let's play Minecraft Episode 1, yeah, Ruby. Chapter 1, Rage Quit, Surgeon Simulator. Some of it, yeah, but at the same time, there's plenty of stuff here. Plenty popular enough, like, from 10, 11 years ago. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's just painful to look at this stuff, man. Usually between, like, the one to four minute ballpark for a lot of these. And I just feel like they took a massive financial hit with that because the content they were producing wasn't cheap stuff for the most part. And there's no way they were seeing a return off the ad revenue because the videos were too short to be reaching that like upper echelon of doubloons that you'd make from a YouTube video. So I just think that as they invested more money into these big projects, without increasing the runtime of a lot of them, they weren't seeing a lot of big returns on it, which probably hurt them. And I'm just speculating that that's the change that was probably the biggest thorn in their side, like the most annoying rock in their shoe. But the entire landscape of advertising online and monetization has gone through huge changes since they began. I just feel like that's probably yeah. the one that was the most hurtful to them. But anyway, I'll stop mm. speculating on that and instead speculate on something else. So a lot of people have been wondering now with this announcement, what's going to happen to all the Rooster Teeth affiliated channels that are under their umbrellas? Things like Fun House or Slow Mo Guys, things like that. Because Rooster Teeth had a lot of other channels outside of just their main one. How will they be affected? Death I have battle. no fucking clue. It seems like a messy headache to me since they're under the Rooster Teeth brand, which is, of course, owned by Warner Bros. Discovery, which has now pulled the plug on it, taken it off life support. It feels like the other channels are going to have to go independent if they want to keep them going, but I don't think they can just do that. They'll probably have to buy it from Warner Bros., right? Wouldn't that be how it works, considering they just got shut down by Warner Bros.? So if they want to go back up without them, they'd need to acquire the rights from them, I would think. But I also don't really know how all of these inner workings here with their deals go. That'd just be my guess. I would imagine a lot of those other channels, like the slow-mo guys, would want to continue to operate independently. So I think that'll probably be the direction. I just don't exactly know how that's going to work. But again, I'm just a fucking idiot, so there's a good chance that maybe it's not as messy as I think it'll be, and this it might be pretty seamless going forward. But either way, it is sad to see Rooster Teeth shut down after 21 years online and being such a pioneer in the commercial commercialization of gaming content online and really just internet content in general. Rooster Teeth was at the forefront of, like, breaking ground and commercializing this whole space so they earn their flowers here and i'm wishing the best for everyone that was affected by this with the layoffs i'm wishing you all the best moving forward and rest in peace to rooster teeth that's about it so yeah also just my big thing with with rooster teeth just once again the very moment that they stopped being independent and they started being under a bigger company a company that wanted to push ideals onto them and force them to go in one direction versus just letting them continue to be exactly what they were i guess that's just 
how it is, man. I don't know what else to say about this except for just you reap what you sow and good things never last. Sometimes they die very slow, painful, agonizing deaths that honestly should have been over with years and years ago. <laughs> anyway, that's going to do it, everyone. This was Penguin Zero with uh, Goodbye Rooster Teeth. Well, Penguin Zero, a.k.a. Charlie, a.k.a. Moist Critical, whichever you want to refer to him, refer to him as. But anyway, that's going to do it. So we're going to leave a like on this, and uh, we hope to see you all very soon. But until next time, I'm Nate. I am Luke. Y'all be good people. Take care. Peace.